Okay guys, here I am today. I want to show you how to put together a fall train and a 440. And there you have it, you guys. Nick's Garage is supported by Atlas Equipment and K-Tool International. Hi, I'm Nick, and welcome to my shop. Well, I'm in my assembly room where I assemble the engines. Right here, I've got a 440 engine that belongs to Dan in uh, California. And this is going to be a Kowalski built, uh, that a car that we have at the body shop. But in the meantime, I got his engine here, and I installed the camshaft. And now, I want to talk about many comments that come in and also emails from you viewers saying, Nick, you build a lot of engines with flat tappet cam, especially hydraulic flat tappets. And how lucky are you? Because I read a lot of comments that people are wiping out cams, Rule 90, comp cams, or whatever. You know, I use all kinds of different hydraulic flat tappet cams. Yes, they are made out of cast iron. Who machines them? I do not know. But the most important is the spring pressure. If you got too much spring pressure, you are gonna wipe out the cam. Here's the uh, no-nos when it comes to installing flat tappet cam. Rule number one, when you get a hydraulic flat tappet, like so, you gotta make sure when it goes in the bore, like in this 440 engine I got here, if you see it sliding into the bore, and you see it turn nicely like this, you know that it's ready to be installed. If you put a lifter in the bore and it's tight, and it doesn't wanna turn, it'll wipe out the cam. Because don't forget, once the engine starts, as the cam turns, the lifter turns with the cam load. So this is how you save the cam from wearing out. And also, you know, the spring pressure, like I was saying earlier, is very important. You know, like a flat top of cam, I put an average of 120 pounds of spring pressure on the seat, and maybe 280, 300 open pressure when the valve was maximum open. You know, you're working against the lifter and the cam with pressure. I made a little chart here I want to show you guys, so you understand. You know, this is what I work with. This is for a basic big block high performance. Seat pressures, I put them about 120, 125 pounds of pressure on the seat. When, that is when the valve is closed. But when it's open pressure, maybe a lot of cams are about 500, 525 lift. I put up about a 290 to 300 pounds maximum pressure. And this is for flat tappet camshafts, flat tappet hydraulics or solid lifter. So, you know, uh, this is the, the basics. You know, a lot of people say maybe you don't put enough spring pressure. But you know what? Some cases, when you want to break in a cam, when it's a new cam, some people put used valve springs. Break in the cam for 20 minutes for, uh, sorry, for, you break in the cam at 2,000 RPMs for 20 minutes on the dyno. And then they put the springs, which are much stronger, much more pressure. And then after the cam is broken in, you put them in, and then you get the car, the engine running, I should say. But in this case, what I do is I work with the springs that I'm gonna stay with the engine. And then when you put on the dyno and everything goes well, it's great. If we have to go to 55, 56, or 6,000 RPM, and if we have valve float, then I'll take out the springs, add a few shims, add 10 pounds of pressure, and of course, in many cases, it will go away. We will have no more valve float. So the best part is start with a weak spring or your new springs, but you know, to a certain pressure like I explained earlier. You know, then again, it's just a general high performance engine. These are not made for racing. These are engines that are built for customers that want a basic 440 like I have in many, many cases. And you know, a lot of people say, Nick, why don't you go to a roller cam? Sure, you could go to a roller cam. The cam costs more money. Then you gotta get roller lifters. Then you gotta get shorter push rods. Then you get roller rockers. And before you know it, you're up to $2,000 plus. But what I try to keep here with my client, I keep the factory a flat top of cam with uh, milling lifters that are made in USA, like you see here. I've got a comp cam in this one here, and I wanted to tell you guys, they're made in USA. I've been using them for quite a few years and they work for me. So I also want to also tell you that the cam, before I install it, I, uh, I brush it off with a driven engine, uh, engine assembly grease, which I've used for many years, works for me. And also when I assemble the engine with all the bearings and rings, I use this melting lube, engine lube, pre-lube, which works for me very well. 
So during this video, what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna install the lifters, push rods, rocker shafts, and there's a certain way to put a rocker shaft, how you lubricate it, and then after that, we're gonna prime the engine. And then you just wanna make sure that all the rockers get oil. And you wanna make sure all the lifters get oil also. You guys are gonna see it, we're gonna put it on video. And at the same time, you turn over the crank, make sure you got good oil pressure. We're gonna prime it with my milling oil pump that I've installed here with a brand new filter. I got my gauge here. We're gonna put the drill, and then we're gonna spin it and see what we have. And you guys, what I'm gonna show you guys here right now is something you guys could do at home or even in the car while the engine's in the car. It's a very simple procedure. So I'll get started. I'm gonna start by lubricating the lifters, put them into the bores, push rods and rockers, and then after that, we're gonna prime it. Okay, so we're gonna start by installing the lifters, and of course, we're gonna lubricate them. We're gonna take them all out of their boxes. I've done one side. So now I left the other side, so we're gonna show our viewers here on uh, our channel. Now a lot of people are saying, where are these lifters made? Well, the ones I got from Melling are made in USA and I've used them. I've never had any issues with them, so I'm pretty lucky. So here we go. We're gonna lubricate the sides, especially the bottom. And now the most important thing is, look at this. When you put it in, you want to make sure it goes in just like this. Look at that. No pressure whatsoever. And you know for that reason, when you do this, look, it turns. So you know that that lifter bore is perfect. So let's do the other seven and keep going. Yeah, you know, like, this is a very simple build, you guys, you know. Going to roller cams, roller uh, lifters, it gets expensive. So I try to keep the budget within my clients. And here we go. Here's another one. Yeah, you can tell. This is good. And I've also lubricated the cam. If you guys take a good look at the brand new cam, it's also lubricated the same way, just like the same way I do the lifters. Look at that, so beautiful, look at that. So beautiful. You know, you can feel it, you know, when you install the lifters, you can feel it. You know, if it's scratching or grinding, you can feel it. If it goes smooth down like butter, you know you're good. Like so, look at this. You don't hear anything, the lifter turns, this is perfect. Okay, we got a few more. That's good too. A couple more to go. You know, if you find lifter bores that have rust, for sure the old lifters are gonna go in. So what you do is sometimes you try to find a way to polish the lifter bores and then you have an old lifter, use an old lifter to keep uh, practicing cleaning the bore. So before you put a new lifter, clean it out with an old lifter with a nice uh, oil and, uh, you know, sometimes you can use a wheel cylinder uh, uh, stone that cleans wheel cylinders or rebore it or rehorn it like they did on the rear drum brakes back in the time but it's very seldom that would be on a block that's kind of rusted that had been sat outside and everything got rusted out but an engine that you tear down that was running a, and so many years and then it's stored in good places never got rusted or water side you're good just like this one here so here's our last one and you know these are hydraulic lifters if you guys take a good look look at this I want to show you something see this there's no oil in them, right? But now we're gonna prime it. I'm gonna show you after when we prime it, how the oil goes through the lifters. It goes through a, a, a vein through the block that's gonna fill up the lifter through this oil hole. And then becomes hard and they're self-adjust. That's why we don't put no adjustable rockers. So let's keep it simple. All right, let's try this one here. See that, like so, perfect. Okay, now let's put the push rods in place. 
I had the push rods checked. Here we go. I've checked them earlier. They're not bent or anything like that. See, look so. And you see, these are the genuine push rods that came with the 440. These are genuine Chrysler push rods. They're in good shape. They're not worn out. I had all the tips checked. We had them washed. And of course, they're going back in place. Why spend money extra when uh, what you have works well? If one is bent, then you get one new push rod. Like I said earlier, you go to a roller cam, yeah, it could make a little bit more power, but I have to go with what the client wants. And then we go this way. We lubricate the push rods. We don't want to put them on dry, like so. Then we do the top of the uh, valve stem, like so. Okay, that's done. Now, a lot of people have this issue. Look at this, you guys. This is the rocker shaft. If you guys notice that the little holes that feed the oil to the rockers are on, on the side. They're not dead center with the bolts that hold on the shaft. They're on the side. This goes towards the spring, you guys, like so. You see it? Towards the spring. Let me just install one just to show you guys. Here we go. A lot of people have them backwards. A lot of people put them this way. And of course, you're gonna lose oil pressure. But in this case, if you look, there you go. If you look from the front, the, the oil holes, the bleed, the lubricate the rocker shafts are towards the valve springs. Okay, so now we're gonna put the push rods in. This one's all in. These are all in place and everything. Okay, so here we go. And also, I have the rockers washed, and you always have to wear, check for wear. If you see the tip would touch the valve stem, if they're badly scratched or worn out, you do not put them back. And sometimes it's very hard to see if these are worn out or not. They look smooth. But you know what? By priming the engine, we're going to see if the lifter and the rocker get tight. If they do, it looks pretty good. So we're going to continue. And then after that, go to the dyno and take it from there. And you know, like we had the issue with the Barracuda. The engine went well on the dyno. And then we had the engine installed in the car. And then I had it running for a while. And then before you know it, we had one rocker that was making a noise. So that's not a big issue. All we did was remove the valve cover, replace one rocker, and then back on the road. And I wanted to show you on the big block Mopar, you got a right hand and a left hand. So you can see they're offset. So this is how you put them together. If you come behind me, you take a right hand, then you take a washer, like so, and we go to the cylinder number eight. And that's how they are placed. Then we take the longer bolt that's on the, uh, this is the, uh, the one that goes over here. Then we take two more rockers, the same way, follow the same pattern, right hand, washer, left hand. And then we get them here. Then we put another bolt here. Don't worry, we're gonna get to the push rods in a little while. And then we go back to the other set of rockers, like so. But if you guys are saying why the shaft dry, doesn't matter. When we prime this edge, you're gonna see the oil coming out like crazy. And let's put our last two rockers. Now we're gonna take our time. Uh, we're gonna to try to line, it, line up all the push rods with the rockers. You know, I'm using the same rockers, same shafts, same bolts, and same push rods. You know, you know they're good from the factory, why not use them? There's nothing wrong with them. So slowly now, we're gonna start compressing down the shaft towards the uh, push rods and towards the valve springs. It's a very simple valve train here, Chrysler has on the 440, very simple. You guys could do this at home, it's very simple. You don't need any experience or just watch me see how I do it. I'm gonna tighten them one at a time, slowly. I'll take my K2 International Ratchet. 
and smooth them in slowly, like so. You want to make sure you know that all the push rods are in the cup of the rocker, like so. And another thing you've got to make sure, you've got to make sure that the end plug is there. Because once you lose that plug, you're going to lose oil pressure. But we had this wash, the plugs are there, they're all in place, so we left them as it is. I just wanted to show you guys something. Now we're gonna torque down the bolts like some people say, Nick, you don't torque them down? Not really, I tight them down by hand, but you know what? I'm gonna show you guys, we need to torque them down 25 foot pounds, like so. I'm gonna tighten them down slowly at a time. Yeah, you know what, you guys, when you do a lot of shafts in your life, you know how to torque them down. I mean by freehand without using a torque wrench. But anyways, I'll do it because uh, some of my viewers are gonna say, Nick, you don't use a torque wrench. There we go, 25 foot pounds. Okay, so that's done. Make sure all the push rods are in place. And now that we have not primed the engine yet, take a good look at this. See this? You can tell that the lifters are empty. So we're gonna prime it now. I'm gonna put my drill on, we're gonna go counterclockwise. But just to let you guys know, that the oil is fed through the rocker shafts through the block right here on cam bearing number four. There's one tunnel there and another tunnel there. And how this is fed through the oil pump is as the cam turns, the oil holes on the camshaft journal number four, like so, you got one opening there and you got one opening there. And it's like a V. And as it turns into the block, when this hole lines up with the main feed, then it feeds oil to one side. And as it turns, then that one lines up with the main feed and then feeds the other side of the head. So from one bank to another. I wanna show you guys how this is done. So now we got our rockers are in place. We know the lifters are all in place. And now we're ready to prime the engine. And of course, I also installed a gauge that we should have 70, 65 to 75 foot pounds of pressure. So here we are. So I get my tool here, which I have a special shaft made, like so. And we're gonna turn it counterclockwise. And of course, you gotta make sure that all your plugs are in place. Oil filter, oil pump, strainer, oil pan. And I've installed about five liters of oil. I'm gonna add one more, because this is a six quart pan or six liters, like so. I'm gonna put it like this, okay? I like to lubricate them all. Okay, I'll let it drain for a while. I use zinc oil, mineral oil, non-synthetic, and I also always add a bottle of Lucas Zinc Additive. Now you wanna break in a brand new cam, you wanna make sure you don't wipe out the cam. You gotta make sure. Zinc is also like a lubricant uh, that was removed from the later uh, type of oil because of the uh, catalytic converter, but these old cars don't have catalytic converters, so the zinc will not destroy anything. But it does add protection and lubricant, lubrication to the flat top and camshafts. So let me just put it in here. I do this to all my engines, like so. I'll let it drink for a while. Now this here, well, this, if you take a good look, if you look at it, guys, it goes straight down to the oil pump. This is an external oil pump, and it goes directly to the oil pump. So we're gonna spin the oil pump. I have a filter in it. We're gonna spin it. We're gonna spin it. Let's get rid of the bottles here. And now it's gonna work for a while because the filter's only half filled. I already added some oil to the engine. And of course, maybe I should put a valve cover here because the oil's gonna make a mess coming out like I did to this custom-made valve covers. I've got the valve train in place here, and I put a valve cover because once the oil comes up to the lockers, it comes out quite a bit, then it makes a mess outside of the engine. So I'll put another valve cover on this side, which I have right here, 
you can see right through it. Let me bolt it in place before I start climbing. Make it so we can do a nice clean job. Here's the bolts I have. These are uh, valve cover screws. I'm only using them temporarily. I'm only going to use them on the bottom because that's where the oil sits, like so. I'm going to prime it because, you know, you want to see what kind of pressure it has. You want to see if uh, the lifters get lubricated. You want to make sure the rockers are uh, solid after when they get lubricated or after it's primed, I should say. Yeah, you know, it's a good idea to prime the engine before. And at the same time, you know, when you have the heads clean, you want to make sure that that oil goes through the cylinder head, through the shaft. So at the same time, you're going to see if all the oil goes through all the rockers. Now, if the heads are never removed, I wouldn't worry about it too much. But these heads, you know, like I said earlier on another video, that when they get uh, used on an engine for a long time, because they have an oil bleed right here and right there on both sides of the cylinder. So that means you can put it from left to right. But if the oil passage wasn't used for a long time, it could get blocked over the years. So you gotta make sure that both sides are clean so when you switch the heads over from one bank to another, you know it's gonna work. Now I already have five, six quarts in the engine. So I'm gonna prime it here. Let's see how it's gonna go. And let me tell you something, you know, what I meant by custom made is this shaft right here was machined for me because this is a shaft that used to be sold by Mopar Performance. It's a priming shaft. So I use it all the time on the small block and big blocks. And I machined it here to be smooth so that as I'm priming the engine, this has a hexagon finish. I don't want to wear out the new bushing that I installed. So this goes straight down into the oil pump, like so. If you take a good look, it goes straight down here. There's oil in the engine, the pan is in place. Okay, so now we're gonna use our electric drill and we're gonna go counterclockwise on a big block, clockwise on a small block Mopar. And here we go. You guys take a look at the gauge. The moment the filter gets filled up and all the oil gets into the uh, galleries, you're gonna see oil come out of the lifters and of course, they're gonna start hardening up. And here we go. Okay, take a look at the lifters. Now watch this. Watch the oil come out of there. There you go, you see it? You can see some of the bubbles coming out of the lifters. So now what I do in this case, you know we got good pressure. I'm gonna turn the crank slowly so I could try and line up the holes on the camshaft uh, uh, journal with the block, or should I say, the line up with the uh, opening uh, feed lines to the block. Okay, I'm gonna turn it a bit, a lot of time. Here we go. It's gonna take a while, but I wanna make sure I see both sides get fed with oil. And here we go. You can see the lockers are all dry. Wait till the oil comes up, you're gonna freak out. How much pressure do we have? 7580, perfect. So I'm gonna keep turning the crank because I wanna see that all these lockers get oil. And let's keep going. Here we go. Whoa, George. Let me see this, George. Go. There we go. Look at that oil coming through there, you guys. So now we gotta turn the cranks up a few times to get the oil on the other side. So then when you stop, that's why I don't lubricate the shaft. It gets lubricated as you prime the engine. So now we're gonna turn the crank until we can line up the journal number four on the camshaft with the cylinder block. And this guy's on this side is not lubricated yet. So we're gonna keep turning the crank until we see oil come up on this side. So this side is done, I'm not worried about it. So let's turn the crank again. And this is a guesswork right now. You gotta fluke it off. Here we go. You see on one side, when you put it on top that center of the mark, it lubricates on one side. 
or you have to turn it again. If you don't get any oil on the other side, you turn it again uh, uh, 360 degrees, line it up again, and then you're gonna get oil. But in the second cylinder head now that you wanna lubricate the other side like we're gonna do right now, is guesswork. We gotta turn it a little bit at a time, and hopefully we get oil. And here we go. Okay, keep going. We're bound to find it, don't worry. It's gonna take a while, but I'll get it. Nothing yet, right? Nothing yet. George, it might take a while. I hope I find it. You got it? There you go. There you see it going. Nice. Look at it come down the floor, right? Check that out. Perfect. And now, now, if you want to push down on the rockers, you guys, they're gonna be like solid. Here, let me just show you. I'm pushing down on it. See, there's no more play because now the lifters all got filled up with oil while I was cranking it, turning it over. I was also filling up the lifters at the same time while I'm waiting for it to be fed to the rockers. And there you have it. See that? They're all nice and tight. Let's check this side, all of them. But then again, you know, I'm sure they're all good. Some are open, some are closed valves. But then again, I'm sure they're good. Once we get it on the dynamometer, we're gonna run it. Now, another important factor, because we are running the engine on the dyno, of course, before I deliver an engine, so we got all the setup done for breaking in a cam. We got the right lubricant, we lube the cam, we lube the lifters, we wanna make sure the lifters are loose in the lifter bores, we got the push hose walkers in place, and we're using the correct oil with zinc, and, of course, we also had it coated with this type of uh, break-in uh, engine assembly made by Driven. And, of course, like I said, the spring pressure is very important. Not too much. You know, you want to have enough just to break in the cam with the new springs that came with the cylinder heads. And if we need to shim it, we're going to do that on the dyno. So once we're done dressing up this engine, it will be put on the dyno. When I time the distributor, carburetor, fill it up with fuel, and the moment it starts, we're gonna run it for 20 minutes at 2,000 RPMs to break in the cam. And you know, you wanna make sure you got good pressure and a good splash that this cam gets wet and gets well broken in. And there you have it, you guys. Hope you guys uh, learned something from this. This is the way I do it all the time. I've been very lucky. And uh, I still work with flat type of cam shafts, and here you have it. And you know, there you go, you guys. You know, like I've done a lot of these engines and uh, I use the same procedure all the time because you know it works for me. You know I've got the same setup in my Kowalski Challenger. Even the original motor that I'm going to build, I'm going to do the same thing. You know, and uh, it works for me. You know, like you know, like I, I'll be honest with you guys. Out of the 48 engines I've built here since I moved here, I had one camshaft wiped out. So that's a pretty good number, one out of 48. So you guys, let me keep doing what I'm doing, and we'll take it from there. I know most of you guys are watching me and you're not subscribed to my channel. It's easy, you guys. It's free. It won't cost you anything. So subscribe. And thanks for spending some time here in the engine room with me. Till next time, thanks for watching us here on Nick's Garage. And you guys, if you look down below the video, we have a whole bunch of merchandise that you guys can buy. So whatever you like, buy it, love it, wear it, and enjoy it. And help spread the word of Nick's Garage. And if you have some time, check out our Patreon page. We have extra content and you guys can watch it and take it from there. And we'll see you next time.